the goal here is to get tons of good practice taking an object, a lens, and showing you where the image is going to be and knowing what kind of image it is. Okay? So let's do it. Let's just dive in. First situation. Situation number one is a situation where we have a lens. Okay? And you have, you know, your focal length here and here. And then you have two times the focal length on, on either side. And this is going to be important for certain kinds of problems. But right now we're going to say, what is the image formed if you have an object that is on the outside of twice the focal length? Okay. Well, just like any problem, you do your special rays, right? You say, well, I have one special ray that leaves parallel, right? And remember, these aren't the only rays that leave this object. There's rays going in every single direction. We want to just pick three of them that help us identify the location of the image. Okay, so we have this first one that goes parallel, and as you know, it goes through the focal length like this. Okay, we have a second special ray that goes through the center, and then they intersect here, as you can see. Okay, and we have a third special ray that goes through the focal length on my side and then cuts over parallel. And I, you know, it's a little fuzzy how I drew them, but really these should all be <laughs> intersecting at the same point. If you do this with a ruler, it's much more clear, right? But these all should be intersecting at the same point and you get this image. Okay, now here's the deal. This image, as you can see, is inverted. It's upside down. Okay, because actual light rays are forming it, it's going to be a real image. And as you can see a little bit more clearly from the picture, um, not my picture, but the picture in the slides, it's going to be smaller than the original object. Okay, so uh, in other words, if this is the object and this is the image, the image is going to be a little bit smaller. Okay, so we've reduced the size of it. Okay. That's situation number one, right? I hope that you're starting to get the hang of this, right? You take an object, you do your special rays. Technically, we could get away with only doing two special rays because they just have to intersect at one point, okay? Um, the third one is just kind of like a confirmation, but really you can form any of these images just using any two of the three special rays. Okay, let's do the next situation. In the next situation, I have a converging lens with the object between f and 2f. So what does that look like? Um, that looks like this. I have my little lens, right? I have my focal length here and a focal length here. And I also have two times the focal length here and two times the focal length here, okay? But this is different because now instead of the object being outside 2f, it's between f and 2f. So here's going to be my new, my new object. Okay, I'm actually gonna make it a little bit smaller than that so that it's not bigger than the lens. Okay, and now I wanna see where this image is gonna form. Okay, well, let's, let's do just two special rays this time, just to show you you can get away with just doing two. So I'm gonna do my parallel over, this is my all time favorite, parallel over, and then that cuts through the focal length on this side. Okay, and I'm gonna do my straight through the center. Keep that going, keep that going. Look at that. Now we have an image being formed way over here, right? And so again, you see that it's inverted. Again, you see that it's real because it's actual light converging at this point, okay? You don't have to trace the light back to some imaginary conversion point. But this time it's very clear that if this is the object and this is the image, this image is much larger, okay? So in, whereas in the last case, when the object was outside of 2F, we, um, we shrunk the image, right? Now we're actually magnifying the object, all right? Okay, that's situation number two. Situation number three, I bet you can guess where this is going to go. The object now is going to be within the focal length. And you may remember 
from the last video what's going to happen. So go ahead and make your prediction in your heads. See if you can predict what's going to happen from the last video. And here we go. I'm going to go ahead and make another lens. Right? I'm going to make my little center line. I'm going to make my focal length here. There's going to be another focal length over here. These should be symmetric. I guess I should move that a little bit out. Okay, and now our object is inside the focal length. Okay, so what does that do? Well, I'm just going to use two special rays again. And I'm going to have my one special ray that goes in parallel and then cuts through the focal length. Right? Then I'm going to have my other special ray that just goes through the center. Now, look at that. These are diverging, right? A real image is not going to be formed. We know that. But if I do have an eyeball over here, looking at, look at this light, this, this eyeball sees these light rays being traced back to what appears to be a much larger image over here. So this is object, and this is image, right? So in this case, we have a virtual image. We know that because we have to trace the rays back to some imaginary point. But these lights, these light rays here, are not actually converging to form an image, OK? It's an imaginary image. Um, so that's a virtual image. Um, we can see that it is upright. We know that virtual images are generally upright. And we can see that this image is larger than the object. So what we've created here is a magnifying glass. This is just a magnifying glass. OK? Very cool. That's situation number three. Are you getting the hang of this? You see how this works? Forming these, these images using these special rays. Um, we're going to do another example, a situation number four. But in this one, we're actually going to use a diverging lens. OK? So let's get an example going with a diverging lens. So. One thing that you can guess about a diverging lens is that if it makes light diverge, can it ever form a real object, a real image? Is that even possible? Remember, to form a real image, you need actual light rays converging, right? A diverging lens will never get light rays to converge, right? They always diverge. So all images formed with a diverging lens are always going to be virtual. OK? And we're going to see what that looks like in a second. So let's take a diverging lens with an object outside of the focal length. So I'll make a focal length there. I'll make a focal length there. And then I'm going to make my object. OK? There's my object. And so we're going to do one special ray that moves in parallel, right? But remember, diverging lenses don't bend the object towards the focal length, they bend it away. So this is going to diverge out like this. But the way that it works is it diverges as if it's coming from the focal length on, on the object side. OK? So a diverging lens, the parallel one still bends, but instead, instead of bending through the focal length on the other side, it bends as if it's coming from the focal length on this side. OK? And then let's do the second special ray, which is directly through. Again, even though it's a, di a diverging lens, it's not going to be impeded or changed at all by, by going through the center. So, so there's our two uh, special rays. Okay, Where do they um, meet? Right, They meet right here. Okay, So notice, it's, it's an interesting situation. If I, have, if I have an eye over here, right? and it's looking at this light, right? It sees one light that it, it's as if it's coming from this position, and then it sees another ray of light that actually is coming. So it's almost like a hybrid between virtual and real. But if there's any virtual part at all, it's considered a virtual image, right? So since I have to trace this ray back to where it, it meets, right? That means that is going to be a virtual image. So in this case, I have a upright virtual image that is smaller than the original object. So if this is the image here, 
and this is the object, you can see that this one is much, much smaller. Okay, so cool, cool. It turns out that um, diverging lenses are important for corrective lenses, and we're going to get into that in, in a later chapter. Okay, um, so just note here that diverging lenses are a little bit different in the sense that your first special ray, the one that goes in parallel, instead of converging to the focal length, it uh, cuts away as if it's coming from the focal length, right? So the image formed by a diverging lens is often going to be between the lens and the focal length, okay? All right, and so once again, also remember that diverging lenses can only possibly make virtual images, okay? Because the light's never going to converge. All right, uh, let's take a look at a misconception question here. Imagine you have a converging lens that is used to produce a real image. A piece of black tape is then placed over the upper half of the lens. Which one of the following statements is true concerning the image that results from the tape in place? A, the image is of the entire object, though its brightness is reduced because fewer rays produce it. Um, B, the image of the object is of the object's lower half only, but its brightness is not reduced. And C, the image is of the object's upper half only, but the brightness is not reduced. Okay, so in order to answer this question, it helps to see more than just the special rays. Okay, so let's suppose that I have an object like that, right? And let's suppose that, you know, this the focal length here. So this is, we'll say this is outside the focal length. And remember, I said that there's lots and lots of different rays that leave this, this object, right? So there's going to be the special rays, of course, right? And there's going to be this special ray that meets there. It's going to be this special ray. I'm not drawing this very well. Um, one thing I want to say on exams, don't do what I'm doing here. Don't do this like fuzzy, fuzzy business. Use actually a ruler so that everything's straight. Um, I've seen way too many exams where people just like curl their, their beams any which way to form the image they think it should be. Um, if you do this with a ruler and you do it right, they should always come out proper, all right? All right, so that's going to form an image over here that looks like this, okay? But remember, there are many different rays. So you have uh, this ray that's going to converge at that point. You have this ray, which is going to bend and converge. You have this ray here, which is going to bend and converge. You have this ray here that's going to bend and converge, right? So all these rays. So let's say that now I just take black tape and I cut off, I put it on this top, right? What does that actually do? Well, it just means that it cuts off these top beams, right? But you still have all the same beams from the top that are going through this point, right? So really all that it means is that there's less light reaching this point, but it doesn't mean that that point's gonna disappear, right? It doesn't mean that you're, you're suddenly gonna lose either the top half of the object or the lower half of the object. It's just that for every point of that object, only half the rays are actually gonna be forming the image, okay? I hope that's clear. That means the answer should be A, the brightness is gonna be reduced because there's less rays hitting it, but that, that position of the object is still going to be there, right? That, that means that if I want to form the next you know, part of the object, like let's say this piece of it, right? Let's say this is a bird and I, I just got the tip of the bird, now I want to get the beak or something like that. Then the beak is still going to form here, but less rays are going to get there, so less bright. But you're still going to have that part of the image. Let's say we, we want to image the feet of the bird. Okay, then you're, it's still going to be the same thing. This image of the feet is going to show up over here, but only with half the rays, so less bright. So you're going to get the whole image, but just less bright because half the beams are being cut off. Okay, that's the end of that misconception question. When we get back, we are going to take this a little bit further. All right, we've done a very good job seeing qualitatively where these images are going to be formed. But how can we find out mathematically exactly how, where they're going to be formed? Where can we, how can we find the actual image location? Um, and that's what we're going to do in the next video. And I'll see you there.